Check, check. One, two. Check. Right, are we waiting on anyone or is everyone here? Right, nice one. Yeah, uh, Astro and Ted, my name's Eden. Um, I know there's a few people that I know here, but there's a few that I don't. Um, play drums in the Hull based Paramore Tribute Acts Paraless, um, as well as an avant garde art rock duo as well. Um, Thank you all again for coming, and can we just have a round of applause for Struan and Mark and everyone at Old College for putting this um, Yeah, before I get into what I want to talk about anyway, I'm going to um, quickly play through a track for you, and then I'll get into it. So.
by um, my old metal band Pools to Paper, um, local whole band a couple of years ago. So I know some of you have heard us and I know we kicked with your band John as well. So, um, but what I want to talk about today is um, how many drummers in again, sorry, just to show our hands. Yeah, um, so how many of you are aware of a concept uh, called linear drumming? Yeah, um, yeah, basically linear drumming, for those of you that don't know, is where um, every limb is, sound, is uh, independent from every other one, so you never play, two limbs never play a note simultaneously, basically. So it's, you know, fairly simple concepts, but um, it's something that I use a lot within my own playing because it's, it's great for creativity, uh, independence, you know, developing on what Struan was talking about as well between singles between your hands and your feet and everything. It's great for stuff like that. Um, so basically, um, for, my, um, for my degree as well, uh, for one of my projects I've wrote a book, a tuition book on linear drumming, um, called Exploring Linear Drumming. And within it I use a system which is on the handouts that you've all got, um, which is a numerical system from 2 to 8 basically, and it increases obviously the number is the note value. Um, so like 2 for example is, well I'm left handed but if you're right handed people it's uh, you know the majority of you. <laughs> It'll be um, right, right foot, so. Uh, three, right, left, foot. Um, four, right, left, foot, foot. Five, right, left, right, left, foot. Six, same again, but two feet at the end instead of one. Seven is um, three between your hands, so right, left, right, left, right, left, foot. And then eight is the same again, but with two at the end instead of one. So that's how the system works. And basically, for when you're creating fills and grooves, you um, whatever your subdivision is. So say you're playing in maybe semiquavers, so sixteen notes. You've got sixteen in a bar, so you know you could use um, you could use eight twice for a one bar fill or a one bar groove. Um, or you could use uh, three, 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 and four, which is one of my personal favourites. Um, so that, that's how the system works, and um, basically what I want to do today is pick apart an exercise from my book, so I'll give you a taste of it. Um, the book isn't available yet, but it's going to be available for pre-order, and uh, I'm just waiting on filming the DVD to um, accompany it. So. Um, it'll be available within about know, two or three months, that's it. So. But yeah, the exercise that I want to pick apart uh, is on your handouts. And it's basically um, a sextuplet group of 16th and a triplet. Um, so for counting them, it's uh, one year, one year, two year, two year, three year, three year, four year, four year. So that's your point. So that's the subdivision, um, and in a barrel of sex tuplets you've got um, 24 notes. So um, the exercise that we're doing today, I believe, is six three times from the system. Uh, so followed by three twice from the system. So, so that's the um, that's just one bar. That's just a one bar phrasing. Um, and the process that my book takes um, you through per exercise, the six parts, and the, um, the first part is playing it just between the snare and the bass drum. So, as I just did, the and then the next part is applying it around the toms as a fill. So, just check. Yeah. So the exercise that's in the book is so that's using the exercise as a fill, and then the final step, um, which is great for keeping time, and if 
like me, um, you you perhaps don't count with your uh, hi hat, but as much as you, as much as other drummers do. I mean, I I know that I only got into that, um, you know, maybe a year or so ago, um, and I've been playing for nine years now. So I mean, it's one thing that I wish I would have worked on more, and including it in the exercises, I find really great um, for like keeping time and everything. So. Um, so you just play the same exercise that you do in part two of the exercise. Um, we're just adding the high hats on so that every um, every quarter note or every beat, so it be. If I can play it. Yeah, this this is one reason. I mean, it's it's sloppy on my behalf. I'm not doing it any justice. But um, the reason that I wrote this book, obviously, was not only for other people that aren't aware of the new drumming, but for myself. You know, for developing my own playing. Because um, I mean, like I say, it's one thing that I use a lot within my own playing in musical settings, like in that last track that I just played, the opening fill, the big crossover one. Um, that's all linear. It's just you know completely independent. Um, but just yeah, for developing my own playing, that's you know why I wrote the book as well as for other people. So, um, but that's that's the first part of an exercise, and then the second part is applying it as a groove. So um, the the first step of doing that is to, um, as you do with the first part of the exercise, just apply it between the snare and the bass drum. You just put both hands onto the hi hats. So it sounds like this. So that's the first part in the process of creating a groove, and then the second part is to um, simply move your, be your left hand if you're right-handed onto the snare drum, um, and play them as ghost notes. So it sounds like this. So that's the second part, creating a groove, and then the final part is just to simply add um, the accents in. So uh, within my book, some of the exercises you need to actually move your your right hand across to the snare drum um, from your hi hats, and obviously my left to add in the accent. Because some of the exercises, the accent on the snare isn't always on the you know the two on the two and the four. It sometimes maybe a land on. If it's sixteenth notes, it'll sometimes land on the E of two, or the and of two, for example. So um, for this one, though, it's, it is on the two. So uh, with the accents, it sounds like this. See so again. This is for my own personal use. Uh, justice at the minute but um, yeah that's that's basically the process that my book takes you through um, and there's a chapter in the book on um, each subdivision so you've got eighth notes eighth note triplets 16th notes and 16th note triplets um, and then 30 second notes um, and then there is a chapter on permutating as well um, which won't get into too much because I want to play the track in a second but um, Permutation is basically you change the order of the phrasing. So um, take the phrasing for free, for example, from a book. So right, left, foot. Um, you could change it to uh, right, foot, left. So. And it's just, it is just simply changing the order that you play each note in. Um, and it allows for, I mean, certain exercises in my book 
um, when you're applying it as a fill around the kit, there'll be parts when um, you'll hit the floor tom, say there's a free in there, you'll hit the floor tom and then the snare and then the bass drum. But sometimes you'd maybe want it on the on the back beat and you'd want to hit the snare before the um, before the floor tom. So you re you'd reverse it by you know permutating it. So oh, yeah, the right left, uh, right foot left. Sorry. So on. Um, but yeah, I won't get too much into that because I want to play another track for you now. Um, this is actually a track from my uh, avant garde art rock duo that I just mentioned a bit ago. Um, and what I'm doing with the tracks that I'm playing today is sort of I want to showcase, um, you know, on top of what um, my book has to offer as far as creating fills and uh, grooves, um, showcase how linear can be applied stylistically to pretty much any, any genre of music. Um, so obviously the first track that I did for you was a metal track um, and the second one's um, the chords for it that I played on the guitar are very dance-esque and with the cowbell pattern that I play in the verse it pretty much makes it a dance track the only thing is there's a, an effect on the guitar that makes it sound a bit weird So, but ideally it is a, it is a dance track so I'll play that for you now So that, like I say, is a track from my, um, sorry, a bit out of breath after that, um, from my art rock avant-garde sort of duo. Um, but the the cowbell part in the um, in the verses in the first verse, because um, what I'm doing is because obviously the main. Um, is in um, quavers, but all I'm doing is when I get into the linear cowbell fill, it's in um, eighth note triplets. And uh, in the first verse, when I play that part, it's um, it's actually five, three, two, two from my system uh, used in my book. 
Um, so. So it's 5 3 2 2 in the first part, um, and then in the second verse, when I come to it, um, all it is is um, it's just free repeatedly from my system because I like that um, when I wrote it, I sort of had in mind when I play it in the first part, the backbeat is on the free or the, the snare is on the free. Um, so in the second part, I thought I'd change it up and put it onto the two, um, and it sort of just disjoints the music a bit. And, Makes it feel a seem a bit weird when you're listening to it, but so that's why I chose to use free again because it works out that this now ends up on the two then. So, but yeah, like I said, it's just sort of I came today to showcase, like I said, what linear drumming has to offer basically. Um, and the last track that I'm gonna play for you in a minute is um, a track by a German drummer named uh, Annika Niles. Um, if you haven't checked her out on YouTube, uh, search her and um, check her out because she's an incredible drummer. Um, and this track, I'm going to try and play it and do it justice because it's still a bit funny in some sections for me, but um, I chose to play this because there's, um, there's some great linear fills in it, like in the choruses, and it's very well written where it all matches, the drums match the guitar rhythm as well, um, you know, through these linear fills. So um, I'll play for that, that for you now and like I said, try and do it some justice.
you very much. Um, yeah, I tried to do that some as much justice as possible, but um, like I said, she's an incredible, incredible drummer. So if you haven't check her out, um, but uh, how are we doing for time, Struan? <laughs> um, have to. Have to. Uh, has anyone got any questions? Anything drum related about my book, about linear drumming, or anything at all? See, when you're doing like metric, like modulation in a song, like how do you keep track of where you are in the song? Is it just through this thing? Um, I mean, we met we metric modulation. I mean, I'm still. Very, it's my knowledge of it is still very basic, but I think it's just knowing knowing what you're doing and sort of. I mean, we are referring to the cowbell bit in that track in the first verse. Um, I don't think it's actually me metric modulation as such. It's sort of implying the time because um, it's in eighth note triplets, but it's um, groupings of four. Uh, Yeah, it's not metric modulation as such, it's just sort of implying it. Um, but as far as metric modulation, I mean, I think it definitely helps just knowing exactly where you're pushing the beat and like, um, obviously you need to have a, good, a strong pulse in your head. You need to have sort of a, a good um, internal metronome. So it, it definitely helps practice into a metronome as well. But yeah, just knowing exactly what you're doing, like, um, so in a 16th note groove or an 8th note you've got one two three four say you um play a note you change it to a note on if you change it to uh, semi quavers and you play a note on the uh, every three every three notes so If you were to do that, I mean, I, I still struggle with it, and you know, for maybe that example, example I would, because once you throw, it's okay throwing the hi hats out at first. I mean, it feels a bit weird, but once you throw the hi hats out and you get used to it, that's fine. But it's once you throw the bass drum and the snare back to match the modulation that you're doing, basically. That it, if you start hearing the beat, um, I'm trying to try and give you an example. I mean, to me, especially without practicing with a metronome in my ears to that, that as soon as it changes the beat, I don't hear the da 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 um, I don't hear the, the note on every three notes, every three semi quivers. I just start hearing it as a straight eighth note beat. So I mean, it definitely takes practice, but I think just knowing what, what you're playing and knowing your subdivisions really, you know, really well. So I think that definitely helps. I think also like with the, uh, the linear drumming um, technique, also there's one called the mirrored technique, also what you can also look into. Right. It's a really good technique as to, so like when you're going around your kit, you're doing like, you say like your parried adults or when you, it's like, you know, two limbs to hit the same thing at the same time. Yeah. What it does is basically, it's the reverse of what you've done also previous. So like you could do like something on the drum kit, Right. And then you do it basically backwards. Yeah. But you'd be doing it with the left as to where you start with your, um, with your right and stuff like that. Right. But also, what it does is it's also really good because you can use it on your double kick drum pedal. Yeah. And basically, because you was on about your hi hat not being as um, strong um, in your playing, basically, what that would do is basically that would also help you be able to get some more strength into that left foot. Yeah. As to, because you always, no matter which foot you're going to lead with, that's going to be your uh, predominant foot. Yeah. But by doing like a uh, linear drumming and bringing in like a look at like a mirror technique, that also gets like a really good yeah. like, um, stability for your left or yeah. so your right, whichever one. So that's, that's something maybe to. Yeah, yeah, I've never heard of that man, honestly. Yeah, I'm looking, I mean, uh, I'm looking into that one because there's um, 
like um, like so I started off with double kick drum. Yeah. And when I was doing my double kick drum, my my left foot was always like lagging. Yeah. And it was diff difficult. So what I basically did then is to like well I thought well take it from my right foot, take it to left foot instead. Yeah. So then you start off with that one. And then basically like when you're doing like your linear drumming around the drum kit, okay I'm going to start with the right and then like that and then work it backwards and then I start with my left. Yeah. And it's uh, it's just a little bit of a. Uh, it's just I found that helped me a little bit when I was yeah. doing And what double kick drum pedal are you using, by the way? Um, it's, uh, it's honestly, it's just a crappy Merfex. You've, like, you've got some good speed in that, man. <laughs> yeah, well, that's with. Honestly, man, that just comes from listening to metal music yeah. and uh, a band called Vim Sevenfold. Yes, uh, the, yeah. the Rev, like, you know, obviously he was a massive inspiration to me, so obviously I, you know, practiced double pedal and everything, I ended up buying one. So it just comes from, you know, just doing it non-stop, living, living, you know, playing double pedal, so, um, yeah, yeah, now I'll have to check that out, man. Yeah, it sort of ties in what Stroom was talking about as well. It does, I just thought I'd mention, it's like, it's something that not a lot of drummers, unless you've been to conventions, hear about. Yeah. I mean, we're getting from you, I mean, I'm learning things from you guys and whatever, it's just nice to be able to, yeah. you know, because I just thought, well, it, it really ties in with it. Yeah. And unless you kind of know about it, you don't know, really hear about it. Yeah. Because not a lot of people, these unless conventions, talk about the techniques and stuff, you just you really go up to a drummer and say, how long have you been playing for, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that's about it, so it's nice to be able to... Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why, as well, that's why I wrote the linear book. Um, I mean, I know a lot of you guys know about it, but um, until I was shown the, um, until I was shown the linear drum, uh, I think it was maybe three or four years ago now, I was completely unaware of it. Um, and, I mean, you know, in my research into it, as far as tuition and educational guides, there isn't much you know, written on it. I also found out like, techniques like Buddy Rich with his rolls on his left hand. Yeah. You know, really good for like your fillings because instead of just using both hands to do your like your, your rolling around the kit like this to end of a song kind yeah. of. Yeah. You know, it's really <coughs> good because that also like the technique of what Buddy Rich also uses is really good because that it frees up independence because like if you can roll with the one hand and that frees up your other hand to basically do, you know, whatever you're doing. And like you say, ghost notes, like Clad Stubberfield and stuff mm. like that. Then you can then cut and interpret like what they're putting, incorporate into something, and then basically you've got different aspects from different drummers yeah. put into one kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah, it's just it is just um, like I said, there isn't much as far as as linear drumming, especially on as far as tuition books and everything. And it's just it's nice to have um, sort of a good something that's good technical wise, it's good good technique. It's nice to have that in one place that sort of you know, it's it sort of um tackles every everything to do with independence and ghost notes and all that sort of stuff. So but yeah. So are there any more questions? No? Right, thank you very much.